speaker, as I am of all our speakers, but I get to see her every single day, and she is truly a very special person. I mean, she is uh, just a kind person, a warm, uh, very spiritual person, but that has so many talents, and you're going to note that when I read uh, her bio. Uh, she is known for her messages of empowerment. Rolanda L. Brown's devotionals and words of comfort have been encouraging people all over the world. She is a number one best-selling author of At Least Say Thank You, an eight-day devotional plan for a grateful heart's and bestseller, Walking in Freedom, a 30-day devotional journey for women. Rolanda is passionate about inspiring women to walk in freedom with Jesus Christ. She is the co-founder and co-pastor of the Sanctuary Christian Fellowship Church located in Houston, Texas, where her husband Jeffrey, which is right here, <laughs> is the founder and senior pastor. Rolanda is the founder and executive director of Martha and Mary Ministries, Walking in Freedom, and she has over two decades of experience educating, training, motivating, and mentoring youth and adults. She brings expert skills in developing, planning, and implementing programs for youth and adults. Uh, she is a creator and host of the Walking to Freedom workshops and retreats that bring women together from all walks of life to be equipped and empowered on their spiritual journey. Rwanda's newest project, The Pillar of Hope, is a nonprofit organization created to provide resources, support groups, and trainings to meet the needs of the community. Rolanda has a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from the University of Phoenix. She is a graduate student of the Houston Baptist University, and she is pursuing a Master's of Education in Curriculum of Instruction. Rolanda continues to advance in her knowledge and skills to effectively meet the needs of God's people. She is a devoted and loving mother, wife, and grandmother who enjoys shopping, spending time with family, and watching movies. And I really want to encourage you all to visit her little exhibit over here where she is selling her books. And we have bought two, two of her books that we will be giving out as door prizes. So if you're the one of the lucky people to win one, we hope that you are. And it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Miss Rolanda <coughs> Brown. Is stress a friend or a foe? Foe. Raise your hand if you think it's a foe. It's an enemy. Or raise your hand if you think stress is a friend. One. We've not sure you <laughs> Okay. We have one hiding our hand. Uh, what about stress being both? Could stress be both? Possibly. Raise your hand if you think it's both. Okay, so as we go along, we'll see if, if you guys are going to write or not. So first of all, we want to know what is stress? What is stress? And I'm going to get my paper here because I can't see those small words. Stress is something that affects all of us. It affects our bodies, how we react to certain situations. And I like the way the women's health.gov uh, explain stress. It says stress occurs 
when you feel like the demands placed on you exceeds your ability to cope. Have you been there? <laughs> it's such as work or relationship or different things that's going on in your life. Stress occurs when you feel like the demands that are placed on you, it exceeds your ability to cope with it. So National Institute of Health says stress It's a physical and emotional reaction that people experience as they encounter changes in their lives. So you're going through different things and is it working it? Is it still in? I'm sorry y'all. jumps in front of you, you immediately push the brakes. That's your adrenaline giving you that jolt of energy and how to handle that situation. So when something stressful happens and your heart starts racing, as I said before, then that's the feeling of you need to either run or you can handle it. According to the CDC diseases, physical or emotional strain are often signs of stress. Feel that tension on the side. You can feel like you're just in an emotional wreck. Got these emotions going crazy. That's often signs of stress. And stress can be associated with positive or negative events. Remember I asked you if you thought it was a friend or a foe? Some of you mostly said it was both. A positive event that's happening in your life, for example, you're planning your daughter or your son's wedding, or you making plans for a uh, vacation. That's a positive uh, event, but you still get stressed <coughs> over it, but it's something good, because you're getting excited about something that's gonna happen. Then, there's negative events. For example, maybe you have to care for your family member that's sick, or maybe someone's been laid off, and you have to deal with uh, trying to make sure the needs, the needs are met. And working with children, I'm sure, <laughs> that requires, I know, that requires a lot of, you gotta have a lot of uh, patience with the little ones that come in. And, and you may have some kids in your, in your class that are, kind of challenging, or maybe the parent, or maybe a co-worker, okay? So if you look on your, your table, I, I we passed out some uh, three little cards that gives us the definition of the three types of stress. So if you have that, make sure you got it because we're gonna do something, okay? 
Does every table have one? Because you guys are going to work as a team. This table doesn't. Each table needs to have the <coughs> chronic acute, the acute stress, and episodic stress. Yes, please. Thank you. So each table, we're going to work as a, a team or a group. So you only need one set of three. Okay, so while we're making sure everyone has one, I need three volunteers. Yes, ma'am. One of each. Okay. So you should have the acute. These are the three types of stress. And this is according to the American Psychological Association. They said that, that there are three types of stress. And I, need, I want each table to have one that says acute, one that says episodic, and one that says chronic. And then I need three more. I'm sorry? I can get one Okay, come here, come here. That's all right. That's all right. Thank you for volunteering. I need two more volunteers. Who's going to be? Yeah. Two more volunteers. <laughs> Thank you so much. I need one more. Thank you. I'm giving them something. They're going to look over it and then they're going to come back later and we're going to do a game, okay? So you can go sit down and do the game. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's go over the three types of uh, stresses. The acute stress. And it's the most common form and it's the result of recent or anticipated stress, stresses. So you're stressed not because of something that recently has happened or because you're anticipating something is going to happen. That's the acute stress. And it can be positive and negative as I shared with you earlier. For example, you're excited before you're planning your fun type of event, your fun uh, vacation. Or it can be the negative kind when you get in the accident. Okay? As long as the acute stress doesn't last for extended periods of time or too frequent, too frequent, it's okay. Okay? It's okay to be stressed out just for that brief moment. Then there's the episodic acute stress. <coughs> And this stress occurs frequently. This is the kind of stress that continues to pop up. It's kind of like a pattern. The stress keeps coming. And it's accompanied by worrying about things that are happening to you or around you. Okay? And it says also that those of you who are who may be type A personality, and that's me. <laughs> you tend to suffer from this uh, episodic stress because you want to get things done and you want it done. Right, so what you do? I'm going to do it myself. I know it's going to be done right. And lastly, there's the uh, chronic acute stress. And it can be thought of as a never ending, never relenting kind of stress that tugs and pulls on you. And this type of stress, you feel like you have no way out. You can't escape it. Your back is against the wall. This is the kind of stress. And this is the kind of stress that, if not dealt with, can lead to major issues, health problems, OK? Any <coughs> volunteers you guys looking over there? All right, so there was a survey. There's a survey called the Stress in America Survey, and they started back in 2007 uh, doing uh, stress surveys. And so in 2014, they did one in 2014, and then they did another one in 2015. And their results were uh, the participants, <coughs> the adults, and these were men and women, they actually were stressing more than they did the year before. And they also admitted that they're not doing anything to 
handle their stress, to manage their stress. They're just dealing with it. That's what the, uh, the test results reveal. And notice that the women are more stressed than men. That's what the survey said. Why do you think that? Because what? <laughs> we do Well, you know. Expectancy decreases sometimes when they're married, and men's increases. Oh wow! Yes. Yeah. She said <laughs> she they read, handle a lot. She said she read that mm. uh, the women's life being married increase, and the men no, it no. decreases. Decrease, and the men's yeah. increase, and increase because they handle the whole, you know, take care of the whole family. Okay, so you know what they what I read was that they really can't pinpoint why exactly the women stress more than men. Some researchers say it because, it's because maybe when they were doing the test, the ladies shared more. You know, we like to talk a lot. Oh yeah, I deal with this stress. I was stressing yesterday. But the men, on the other hand, they kind of want to keep it to themselves. I don't need to tell you my business, I'm good. So that could be the reason. And I also mentioned because of the hormones and that we are nurturing individuals we can't help. You know, somebody come and tell us your problems. Oh, we gotta do something about it. And our husband, they say, that's none of your business, you're good, you don't worry about that. But we're caring and nurturing people, okay? All right, let's keep going. Uh-uh. Lord have mercy. You know, when I was looking, I was on my uh, social media and I came across this picture. I was like, oh my goodness, because that was me. <laughs> it says, me trying to excel in my career, trying to maintain a social life, trying to drink enough water, trying to exercise, trying to text everybody back, trying to stay sane, trying to survive, and trying to be happy. So in my effort of trying to be happy, I look like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when stress takes a, whole, a toll on us because we're trying to do so much. Notice how we're using the word trying, trying to maintain my career, trying to excel in my career, trying to work here, trying to take care of my family, trying, 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 and all our trying, we're becoming so stressed out because we're trying to do it all and we cannot do it all. Hmm. That person kind of looked like me. It is me. Yes. Now don't think I'm trying to do that cute pose for you that you see the young folks like to do. That side uh, puffered lips. No. About two years ago, I had become so stressed. My goodness. And I didn't even know it, but I was stressed. So because I was so stressed out, my body said, okay, you're not paying attention that you're taking on a whole lot of stuff. Let me just show you, let me just tell you that you need to stop. And so I had Bell's palsy. Had never, ever, ever in my long baby life <laughs> experienced or heard about Bell's palsy. I was like, oh. I told my husband it was one morning, my, my mouth started drooping down, <coughs> my eye wouldn't shut, one of the eye wouldn't shut, and I'm like, babe, something's going on. So we thought I was having a stroke, but found out it was male palsy. And the doctor says because it's a viral infection, which causes, it's from stress, and stress, when you have a lot of stress, we're gonna talk about that, it weakens your immune system. Yeah. So 
this stress piling up on me. And I was actually doing something that was great. Well, I learned that I was going to be a grandma. A life change. I learned that I was going to be a grandma. So we're planning the baby shower. And I'm my daughter, and she's here. <laughs> she she had this what she wanted it to be this this extravagant thing, and I was like, okay, I'm trying to okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. We're gonna do it, baby. We need to make sure it's how she wanted, nice. And I'm just stressing, trying to do it all. And finally, I couldn't. I couldn't move this side. It what uh, Bell's palsy does. It it uh, paralyzed one side of your face. So I couldn't really drink, uh, it was horrible, and I had so much pain in my neck and the back, and it was really scary, because I didn't know what was going on, but it was an eye-opener that I need to, it's okay to ask for help, it's okay to say, can somebody help me with this? And I didn't realize, as I said before, I didn't realize I was stressing until my daughter sent me a text and asked me a question about the baby shower. Oh my goodness! I felt my, my body just like, I felt the pain even more. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm stressing about this baby shower. And that's what happens when stress takes a toll on our body, especially when we don't recognize that we're stressing. So that was two years ago. All right, <coughs> so many diseases are linked to chronic stress. And you guys have stress on that little card. Can y'all read to me what that chronic stress does? What did I say chronic stress was? It's the last one. Yes, that relentless kind of stress that wears and tears on you because you're trying to do everything because you're doing too much, because you're stressing and worrying about so much things. And that chronic stress will cause us to be depressed. You ever wonder why you were, what am I saying? Everything is good, no, you, you've been stressing. It also causes cardio, it's also linked to cardiovascular disease. HIV and AIDS. Asthma, and these are just some of the things that are linked <coughs> to chronic stress, that relentless kind of stress, that stress that just won't go away. Upper respiratory tract infection, the weakening immune system, which is what was going on with me. Sometimes if you notice that you have a wound that just seems like it's taking forever to heal, stress. Also, herpes viral infection. And these are just some of the diseases that are linked to stress. Okay, question. Myth. Stress is the same for everyone. No. No, it's not. The way I handle stress may not be the way you handle stress. You may be cool. You know, this, this makes you work even harder. But for me, I mean, uh, ask my family when I'm planning for an event. Oh my goodness, I try to heal. I try to time to do better. But I just go, ah, they run for their lives because I just <laughs> want type A. Let's see, stress is always bad for you. We asked that question earlier. Was it uh, a friend of mine, right? Is it bad? <coughs> What do you guys say? Is stress always bad for you? No. Well, you guys been listening. Good job. Okay. <coughs> stress is everywhere. So you can't do anything about it. Would you agree? No. What can you do about it? Hmm? You can handle it? How can you handle it? Well, there's this many different ways. Okay, good. No symptoms, no stress. Is that true? No, it's not. Because I was stressed at the time, I really didn't have any symptoms until I actually saw the physical uh, symptoms because I'd been stressing for a while. So, 
So what do you do when you stress out? How do you respond? Do you eat? Sometimes, yeah. Just, it's, I, it's, 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 her thing called comfort food, it really does comfort you. <laughs> no, no, it's not good for you. Maybe you work too much. <coughs> I'm stressing out, I got deadlines to, to make. Uh, maybe you slow down. Oh, How do you respond to stress? Do you try to do many things at once because you're stressing? Or do you decide to, you know, I'm just going to drink this glass of wine. I'm going to go outside and smoke this cigarette because my stress level is way up here. Or do you rush around doing this and that and don't get anything done? Or maybe you say, you know what, I can do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow come, I can do it tomorrow. Me. <laughs> the bar come. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Get it. Yes. Okay. So I need those three volunteers to come up here. Come back up. I hope you've been looking over your paper. What's your name? Lillian. What's your name? Rena. 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 Nice. Marilyn. Guys. Okay, so what they're going to do is they're going to act something out, what's on their paper. <laughs> and you have to decide which stress are they dramatizing. Is it acute? Is it the chronic? Is it episodic? You have to decide. And if you at your table, you guys are a team. So agree on which one it is. And we're not going to reveal what they did until afterwards, okay? So, and you, they don't have to say anything, all you can talk if you want to. Go ahead. I'm sleeping now, so I have a lot of the, the, on the dryer machine. Mm -hmm. Ding, the machine is on. I'm not going to get out of bed and I'm going to get Okay, well, I see episodic, I see uh, chronic, acute stress. <coughs> I see acute stress, okay? We'll see, hold on. Okay, come on. Oh my goodness. Today is the 13th and I signed up for a conference. Uh -huh. And lo and behold, several weeks later, I found out a good family friend who's diagnosed with leukemia. And our family is having a benefit for her this evening. Uh, so lo and behold, I'm here and I'm torn, and, but I decided that I'm gonna make a good thing out of this stressful situation by attending this conference, learning as much as I can, putting the other on the back burner for the time being until the time comes this afternoon to be there. Right. Now, what was that? What stress was that? Chronic acute stress. Okay. Oh, I see episodic stress. Anybody else? I see acute stress. All right. We will see. Come on. Here we tell you. My dad is 102 years old. My mom is 96. Um, I have one family member who's caring for, for them, but I'm, I'm expected to be there. Daycare during the daytime, um, and evening they're 40 minutes away, and I'm trying to run over it to put a helping hand and, and um, try to help arrange the finances for you know that day at the time they passes. So, I'm, oh, what am I gonna do? Oh my gosh, somebody else need to help, you know. Good job. Okay, which one was that? Chronic. Anybody <coughs> say chronic? Oh, we see episodic. Anybody else? Okay, let's chronic. Let's see what they reveal. What was your episodic? Who got that? Yay! Okay, did you guys see that? Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, 
you guys are doing some more. Thank you so much. Uh, I have something for you three over at the table for you guys participating. I really do appreciate that. So I want to do that so we can kind of help ourselves remember the different types of stress when we're feeling it. You can recognize, oh, wait a minute. Okay. This is a Q. Okay, it'll pass. R, episodic, it keeps coming with this frequent. Then you want to start noticing, okay, wait a minute. I'm getting stressed. I'm stressing out a little more than normal. And then that last one, chronic. You just feel like, you know what, I can't do it. Are you you're thinking like you want to end your life or something? That's something major. So I'm going to give you these seven strategies. If you will, write them down or try to remember, take a picture, whatever. And these are simple and easy strategies that uh, we all can use. So there's the positive self-talk. And that's strategy number one which is actually one of my favorites. Positive self-talk is basically saying something good or empowering to yourself. You know, I know sometimes we're quick to encourage someone else, but we forget about ourselves. Yes, it's all right to encourage yourself. Sometimes you don't have to encourage yourself. Speak positive. Say something that's empowering or something that affirms who you are. So what I want you to do right now to yourself, don't say it out loud, but speak something positive to yourself. Right now in your mind, I want you to think about it and say it to yourself. And if you want, you can write it down as well. Say something positive to yourself. And let's go deeper. Don't say, I'm pretty. Because yes, you are. You are pretty, but well, let's go a little deeper, okay? <laughs> okay, did everybody say something positive to themselves? Somebody still thinking? So everybody has said something positive to themselves? Great. Now I want you to say those same words that you said to yourself to your neighbor. Don't forget nobody, don't forget. Make sure everybody has received a positive word. Okay? Don't leave anyone out. Please say something to encourage them. Oh, that's so sweet. You guys are doing good. <coughs> Wonderful. Okay, I got a question. The person who first said something positive to themselves, when you said something positive to yourself, how did it feel? It felt good. Now, the person who received what they said, positive, how did you feel? How did they mean? Better? Yes. Even more better when somebody else says something encouraging to you. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to create your own statement of affirmation. You know, when you have time, you can add those two statements that you said and that your neighbor said to you. Create your own statement of affirmation. And when you feel yourself, you find yourself stressing, Speak those words of empowerment over your life, over yourself. Encourage yourself. You can do this. You got this. It's okay. This too shall pass. It's okay. What I have over there, when you guys have a chance, if you can, <coughs> I've created a statement, 12 statements of affirmation to speak over your life. And I actually give it out when people visit uh, the Pillar of Hope website. And so on the back, there are 12 statements of affirmation it says, I was built for this. I am courageous. I am unstoppable. I have a purpose. I am unique. I am an influencer. I make a difference. I am a winner. I am fearless. I matter. I am motivation. I am an encourager. So these are 12 statements. I want you to make your own. You can have three, you can have five, or as many as you want. Create your own statements of affirmation that you can speak to yourself. I'm not talking about to your children or to your spouse or whatever. But you can speak to yourself, and they can be your own private uh, affirmations. Okay? And if you want one, I'd rather you can get one from the table. 
All right, that's the first strategy, is, is what? Positive self-talk, okay? The next one, be active. Be active, no matter what, get up and move. Move, move about. Go to the gym, go running. Get on that treadmill. Go outside and play with the kids. You know, when you're the kids out there, don't go. Stand up here while they play and have fun. Join them, they love that. They love it when you join with them. Throw the ball, catch the ball. Just stay active, okay? And you know, for those of you who don't like to go working out to the gym like me, I don't like the gym. But I enjoy walking, and that's something that you can do. You can walk with someone, or you can walk by yourself. And there's a thing called mindful walking that you can do that helps with stress. And we're gonna do it right now. Do I have time, Miss Liz? Miss Liz, how am I with time? Elizabeth, <laughs> how am I with time? Am I good? I think you're still good. Okay, so I need everybody to stand up. Make a big circle. <coughs> Make a big circle. Hold hands, please. Yep, I'm making you move. I want you to touch hands. Make a big circle. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we're gonna practice how you would do a mindful walk, okay? You're stressing out, they're stressing you out on the job, there's the babies, oh my goodness. Can I take a 15 minute break? Have somebody come and watch your babies? And you take, go outside and do a mindful walk. So let go hands, you're gonna start walking this way. Start walking. Without saying anything, just start walking. Hey, look. Why are you not taking pictures? Without saying anything, this is your time to relieve the stress. You're relieving the stress. Now as you're walking, you're not thinking about what who said what to you, or how they made you mad. No, you're thinking about the process of walking. You're thinking about your feet touching the floor. Think about that. You're thinking about how your right foot is going down and touching the floor, how the ball of your feet. You're thinking about the sound it makes and how it feels to just walk. Nothing else, you're not thinking about anything else, but you're walking. And when you find your mind going somewhere else, thinking about how mad you are, or what you gotta do when you get home, and oh, I wish she hurry up because I need to get my certificate, just say to yourself, <laughs> right, left, right, left. Say to yourself, don't say it out loud because you're focusing on the right, on the walking, right, left. This is mindful walking. So you may not have to go to the gym, but you can do some mindful walking, and you're focusing on your foot, touching the floor, the ball of your foot, the heel of your foot, the sound is making. You're walking. Thank you, you guys can sit down. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> this is something you can do anytime. You can take a, a couple of minutes to go and take a walk. All right, the third strategy, find pleasure. Find something that makes you smile. Find something that makes you happy. Not anyone else, at like this time, the stress deal, this is personal, you know what I'm saying? This is personal. It's not about you. This person over here is about me, what I need to do, the stress management tools that I need to use when I feel myself stressing out. Okay? Find something that brings you joy. Read your favorite book. Read a book by your favorite author. Watch <coughs> your favorite TV shows. This is us. This is us. Oh, I love that movie. Those are that show. Man, that's my feel good show. Find something that makes you smile, that makes you laugh. Ah. When you find yourself stressing out, find something that pleases you, that makes you have pleasure, that make that gives you joy. Aww. This little guy here, <laughs> that's my grandson. <laughs> and he makes me smile. Now how do you push play on here? How do you push play, huh? How do you push play? 
Do I click on it? Oh, there we go. something and just seeing him, oh, he put a smile on my face. So find something that, or someone that puts a smile on your face, okay? That's my grandson, Carter. <coughs> okay, number four, connect with others. Now's your chance to bond with your bestie. You haven't seen her in a while because you're doing so much. You haven't seen him in a while because you're doing so much. Reach out to them. Send them a text. Hey, what you doing? Talk to them. Send them an email. Go visit a family <coughs> member that you haven't seen in a while. Maybe the family member is elderly and you haven't seen him and said, I need to go because I got so I need I, I need to visit them, but I got so much stuff to do. Take that time to go to see them. Or give them a call. Maybe they live far away. Give them a call. I guarantee you they will make you feel good and you're gonna make them feel good as well. And you will help yourself relieve that stress. Okay? <coughs> Strategy number five. Relax. And there are some relaxation techniques that you can do to relax. You can just uh, mindful walking was one of them. You can do that, as well as breathing techniques. For those who pray, who believe in the spiritual a higher power, do that. Meditate for those who prefer, who enjoys meditating or doing yoga. Do that. Something that can make you relax. Strategy number six. Go to bed. Go to bed. Stand up, oh, I need to do this, laying down, oh, I need to do that. Go to bed, go to bed. I know it's hard. <laughs> I know it's hard. <laughs> like, oh, I know it's getting late, but I need to, I need to, I need to finish this right quick. Let me share with you what, um, what I uh, learned about sleeping. And I'll tell you, I can fall asleep at a drop of a okay? Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> I can go to sleep real fast, real easy. But it's just getting to that bed, you know, getting in the bed and going to sleep. Let me share with you what happens when you <laughs> According to professional sleep societies, adults ages 18 to 60 years old should sleep at least seven hours. That's a lot. That's a long time. <coughs> And then listen to some of the habits that can and sleeping improves your health. Not only does it help with stress, relieve stress, but also improves your health. Listen to this. This is how you can, um, some habits that can help you improve your sleep health. Be consistent, you know? If you go to bed, let's see, 9 o'clock, because 8 o'clock might be a little bit early, I don't know. <laughs> 9 o'clock, go to bed 9 o'clock every day. If you wake up, you gotta. You like to wake up at six or seven a.m. Then wake up that same time every day. Be consistent in the time you go to bed and the time you wake up. Make sure your bedroom is quiet, dark, comfortable, and relaxing. That'll help you go to sleep. Maybe you have a lot of stressors that's making you get distracted from going to bed because you've got no no pad by your bed. You have to do this. Maybe you need to remove those things. Remove electronic devices such as the TV, computer, smartphone, from the bedroom. Remove those things. Avoid large meals before you go to bed. Maybe you need to eat probably about maybe six. <laughs> Avoid caffeine and alcohol just before it's time to go to bed. Avoid to the, uh, tobacco or nicotine <coughs> and get some exercise. Okay? Are, what you can do that will help you fall asleep. Okay? <laughs> Let's see what the next strategy Someone 
Hi, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Just looking like that lady on that, <laughs> feeling like that lady on that picture on the inside. But you say, oh, I'm good, I'm fine. Ask for help. If you feel like you, you, you have these horrible thoughts in your head, you're thinking about, you want to end your life, commit suicide, reach out. Stress can take you there. So when you say, you know what, I'm just, what's the point of living? Reach out for help. Contact your doctor. Or speak to your uh, uh, spiritual advisor, or counselor, or someone. Reach out for help. Don't let the stress get too bad. Don't let it go that far. Remember the, the three stresses that I told you about, the different types of stress. Ask for help, and don't think you can do it by yourself. It's okay to ask for help. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Stress less. When you stress less by doing what? Can y'all remember the strategies? Stress less by doing what? Positive self-talk. Say it again. Be active, great. Find pleasure. Relax. Connect with others. Ask for help. What was the other one? Go to bed, okay? Thank you guys so much. I hope you use those strategies. Okay?